Hello and welcome to our Wednesday Reflection. I'm Jill Smart and I'm one of the Associate Ministers in the team. We sometimes hear the saying, be careful what you wish for because you may get it. It may be something you desire that someone else has or something you've seen in a shop window or even something like, if I had plastic surgery then my life would be perfect. Many people want something to make their life complete, but they don't stop to think about what they already have or what having what they want would do to their lives. If there are problems in life, the problems will still be there, even if they get everything they covet. Here is a reading about the people of Israel asking Samuel for a king, because of course, we all know that voting in the right leader will solve all the problems. Our reading is taken from 1 Samuel chapter 8 verses 4 to 11 and 16 to 20. Then all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, You are old and your sons do not follow in your ways. Appoint for us then a king to govern us like other nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to govern us. Samuel prayed to the Lord, and the Lord said to Samuel, Listen to the voice of peop the people in all that they say to you, for they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me from being king over them, just as they had done to me from the day I brought them out of Egypt to this day, forsaking me and serving other gods, so also they are doing to you. Now then, listen to their voice only. You shall solemnly warn them and show them the ways of the king who shall reign over them. So Samuel reported all the words of the Lord to the people who were asking him for a king. He said, These will be the ways of the king who will reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them to his chariots and to be his horsemen and to run before his chariots. He will take your male and female slaves and the best of your cattle and donkeys and put them to work. He will take one tenth of your flocks and you shall be his slaves. And in that day you will cry out because of your king whom you have chosen for yourselves. But the Lord will not answer you in that day. But the people refused to listen to the voice of Samuel. They said no, but we are determined to have a king, have a king over us so that we may also be like other nations and that our king may govern us and go out before us and fight our battles. This is the word of the Lord. The people were asking for a king. Samuel is now old and the people know that his sons are not capable of taking on the leadership of Israel. They have already been leader of a part of Israel unsuccessfully so now not a good track record. The people wanted a king to lead them, but this displeased Samuel. He felt this was going against God as God was the king. He, however, God told Samuel that it wasn't Samuel the people were against, but God himself. But why did the people want a king? There were three reasons. One, all the surrounding nations had a king and they thought that they needed a king to lead them to show their authority. Two was concern about who would lead them when Samuel died. Everybody knew how useless his sons were. Three, the people wanted a king who would represent power and security and then lead them into battle. A king would change many things in the country. There are some good kings, but many were corrupt. Israel had 43 kings over 450 years. Only a small number followed God. God warned that most of the kings would pervert justice, levy taxes and help themselves to the best of everything. God told Samuel that a king would take their sons to work with the chariots and horsemen. A king would take their slaves for his own use. He would take the best stock and make the people his slaves. This would leave little for the people. Power often corrupts. 
If we think about it, there are politicians and leaders like this today. There are good leaders, whether kings, prime ministers or presidents, but many are bad. I'm sure most of them go into politics to do good things, but often seem to get waylaid along the way. Some of them are only interested in power, and once they have the power, are very reluctant to part with it. They cling on their, onto their status for many years, often using violence and corruption to keep their power. God doesn't seem to appear in their plans at all. The Israelites wanted to be like other countries, but in the process they forgot about God as many do today. They forgot that God should be first in their lives and their faith should always help with the decisions they make. Just as God should be first in our lives and our faith in decisions we make. The people didn't want Samuel's sons because they knew the sons abused their power just like many modern day pol politicians and CEOs. They were warned that leaving God out of the equation would, would, would get rid of the stability and security they desperately wanted. They got their kings, but their country wasn't secure and stable, stable over the coming years. So I would advise you to be careful about what you ask for. You may get it and it really hasn't solved all your problems. If things are bad now, then they will probably be bad after you get what you prayed or wished for. Let us pray. Father, help us to see that the value of the things that we have and that sometimes the things we pray for or wish for are not going to make things better. They aren't going to be good for us. And that we need to deal with things in our lives now as they are, rather than expecting some something we wish for is going to solve all our problems. Amen.